everyone, my name is Maisie and I am a theatre director and maker, originally from England, now living in Galway, and I'm the theatre artist in residence in Backstage Theatre Longford. My name is Fanula and I'm an actor and theatre maker from Dublin. This project is all about trying to do something nice for someone you love who you haven't seen in a while to let them know that you're thinking of them. It might be a grandparent who you haven't been able to visit or perhaps an aunt or uncle or cousin who live far away or maybe even a brother or sister who've been busy working in a care home or hospital. Over the next four days, Fanula and I are going to show you how to make your own puppet play, which at the end of the week you can film and send along to your special person or people. We'll be uploading a video each day to show you how to create and then to perform your puppet play. And we also hope that at the end you might consider sending it along to us for us to have a look. We'd love to see what you've made. So to begin, Vanula is going to start us off by thinking about puppets. We know that you're all stuck at home at the moment and you probably miss your friends and maybe some of your family members and you're probably a little bit bored as well. But we also know that you probably all have brilliant imaginations and brilliant ideas and we're going to use those today and over the next few days to make something that's really fun and something that's for one of your loved ones who you might be missing. So. Before we start, I just want to tell you that I don't really have any great art supplies in my house at the moment. And I kind of miss being able to just walk to the shop and buy some more. But luckily for you, what we're about to make today, you don't need any fancy art supplies because we're going to be used, di using disused things um, from your house or from your garden or your attic. So things that were going to be thrown out or aren't used anymore. So, you see all my little friends that I've made here? They're all made from things that I just found in my bin. Ugh. But no, they're, they're all clean. But I transformed these bits of rubbish and plastic into puppets. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We are going to be making puppets. And over the next few days, we're going to be bringing them to life and creating a story for them. What you will need is some sellotape and a scissors. Those are the most useful things. Any other fancy art supplies that you have absolutely can be used and you'll see at the end when we talk about decorating the puppet that's where they might come in handy but these are the two most important things when we're making our puppet. So I'm going to show you some of the puppets that I've made this morning that were quite easy to make. Some of them are easier than others and there's no big pressure to make your puppet look brilliant. The most important thing is that you imagine that this puppet is real and we'll be doing more of that in the next video. But first, let me show you the puppets that I've made and how I made them because they might inspire some of the ideas in you. So, if we have a look at this fella, I've called him Alfred. Now, he is just made out of an egg carton, but Put some eyes, a little tongue, and start imagining him. And suddenly, we've got a puppet. So that's one example. So you could use an old egg container. Um, here's another one, very simple. So this is a milk carton, as you can see. And this took only a few minutes. I found some plastic from the outside of a packet of plums. So I gave my milk some, my milk carton some hair. I stuck on some eyes, a little mouth, and then some very simple arms out of a uh, newspaper. And again, the magic will come when I start imagining that this milk carton is now a character. Now we have ones that are slightly more advanced or that might look a little bit more spectacular and have a look at this one so a robot this one is made out of a shoe box so i found an old shoe box and i cut a hole into the back of it so that i can hold it and manipulate it its nose is made from a yogurt carton 
I got an old sponge that was going to be thrown in the bin and I made it into a mouth. And, oh yeah, some toilet roll holders, which I covered in tin foil to make some ears. So that's the robot. Um, what else do we have? This one is also very simple. Oops. Um, so this is just made out of a plastic bottle and I've just broken its tail. Um, but actually, cling tin foil is very easy to manipulate. So if you have some tin foil, it's quite easy to work with. So here's an old bottle. Again, very easy. I put an eye and I put some tin foil just to give the idea of a fish. And that's that one. Um, this one, he's a little bit silly. So this is just a potato sack that I found in the recycling bin and I cut a little mouth and you see his goofy teeth? Because I'm thinking about what kind of a character the potato sack might be and I thought, I'm going to give the potato sack some silly hair, some silly eyes and some silly teeth and then maybe a silly voice when we come back to doing some characterization in the next video. Here's another very simple one. This is just made out of cardboard. It's a little star and you might notice with this one. So I haven't given, given this one any eyes. They don't all have to have eyes. The really important thing when you're um, making a puppet and when you're using a puppet, so you, the puppeteer, you are in control of the puppet. So if I want you, the audience, to look at the puppet and to watch it and watch how it moves, if I start moving the puppet while I'm also looking at you, and you're probably going to be looking at me, but if I give all of my attention to the puppet, then you're probably going to look at the puppet. So that's a rule that we'll come back to. But when you make these puppets, it's important that when you're using them, you look at the puppet as you move them, because then the audience will look at the puppet too. So there's a star. Um, I'm going to show you a slightly different one. I'm gonna move my camera back. Now, so you can add some strings to your puppet if you want. So this one, Again, very simple. I blew up an old plastic bag that I had and I put some extra bits of plastic, tin foil and ribbon on the bottom and I now have a jellyfish and I can manipulate this one with strings. Now you might think of other ideas of what you could add strings to, but that's one stringed puppet. Very simple. Now there's one puppet who hasn't gotten a mention yet and I don't think he's very happy about it. And this is my personal favourite. So, let's have a look. You can probably tell that you don't need many um, different materials to make this puppet. All you need is newspaper or any kind of crepe paper and sellotape. Now, you do need a little bit of patience because how to make this puppet, it takes a little bit of time. You mould the newspaper into the shape that you want. So I wanted a little human like this. I started with the head and I made sure to scrunch together the neck and then put sellotape on it. And then I built the body, so this part. And then at the end, I, put on, I stuck on the legs and I stuck on the arms with sellotape. Now you can, if you want to put joints, so elbows or wrists, you can use sellotape to make those. And if you're using your puppet, then you can use the arm and you can make his head look left to right. So this puppet, although it doesn't look as fancy as the others, it's maybe one of the most versatile in how you can use it. And you could dress them up at the end, you could put eyes or maybe a crown. There's lots of things you can do with this sort of puppet. It just takes a little bit of time and it won't look good at the start. You kind of have to keep scrunching newspapers until it starts to take a shape that you like. But it does take a little bit of time but it's a really nice puppet if you want to do something that looks like a human. Again, 
If I'm going to be moving the puppet, I make sure to look at the puppet and not at you, or you might look at me. So, I'm very, very excited to start imagining what puppets all of you might make. So your task now is to have a look around your house or your garden or wherever you live and see if there's anything that people aren't using and that they're going to be thrown in the bin or maybe they just haven't been used in years and years, an old flower pot or some pegs from the line that have broken. And your job is to start imagining what could I make with this? And little by little, you'll start to create some sort of a character like these different ones that I have here. And then we're going to have a look about how to start moving those different puppets and we're going to start creating a story for them. And it'll be the loveliest gift to someone that you love at the end. But be patient and have lots of fun. They're really, really fun to make once you start making them. And even if they don't look great at the start, you can decorate them at the end. If you do have some art supplies, glitter, crepe paper, um, sequins, bottle tops, colored paper, anything like that, you can use to decorate it and make your puppet unique. I'm really excited to hear about everything that you all might make and enjoy. Thank you.